but yeah, but apart from that, how are you feeling? Are you feeling good? I'm feeling um I'm feeling as good as I can feel. Um wherever wherever you are reading or wherever you are listening, wherever you are watching this show, we have unfortunately got some very bad news in the UK. We're inevitably going to go into a second lockdown. Um lockdown number two as it's been um quite beautifully uh <laughs> titled as is going to not only decimate you know the existing parts or whatever has survived the first lockdown in our economy it's also going to if anything relegate us to an entire year calendar year basically in lockdown i don't see this coming i don't see any light in the tunnel i think if we do go under um some level of lockdown which is going to be confirmed in the morning supposedly i've been told or from what i read online actually um so if that's the case then i don't see this lightening up until what the end of the year maybe towards the end of december by that time the year's completely done so um yeah a bit distressing in that regard i think instant kind of feelings about it from me as a as a concern citizen is that i would say i'm not i'm not against it in one in one's in one way right i understand that something needs to be done i understand that they um the government can't allow the numbers to just keep creeping up right you can't allow for us to get in a position where effectively we're having to scramble for beds we're having to scramble for ppe and all that other stuff we can't have that happen so we have to kind of limit the numbers somewhat and hope because they don't mention even too much in the news they don't even talk about deaths too much you know how they wrangle off how they just list off the numbers of deaths is always a bit disconcerting to me right it lacks real humanity but i guess in this sense or in in the space that we're in now at the moment there is no time to mourn anyone's death really we were trying to in a weird way without sounding hyperbolic we're trying to save the world in it everyone in their own little way so there's no time to even mourn anyone just yet but um they can't let the numbers of people getting contaminated or people that are ending up dying or passing away unfortunately creep up or get anywhere close to crazy as they were prior to us locking down at the beginning of the year about march -ish time so i understand something needs to be done but some part of me thinks being heavy-handed and essentially closing pubs which is what's going to happen in the uk we're going to have a 10 p.m curfew which is going to mean most uh bars and pubs and restaurants and other hospitality places won't be allowed to open after 10 p.m which will mean you know punters will have to leave the establishments before 10 i'm assuming for people to be able to clean down and whatnot so that will effectively kill whatever trade some of these bar pubs, bar, pubs bars and restaurants had um during um you know the pandemic um some bars and pubs were able to restart their business they were able to kind of you know um work stuff out by opening up a beer garden maybe if you're lucky enough like the cause and you had another area you could use they turned it into costa del tottenham the people did some interesting things in it but by and large when you read between the lines or when you read just direct interviews from the owners most of the people or most of the landlords uh most of the business or well, these small business owners were saying it still wasn't enough they would just do they had to do what to do to make sure to keep the lights on but in terms of actually uh you know achieving any kind of profit in terms of returning to anything like they were making prior to lockdown it wasn't even scratching the surface so for these same establishments to be expected to go under lockdown and somehow still come out of the other side is really concerning we haven't heard any news from the government about um support in terms of loans bursaries whatever it may be to assist them during these hard times so that's going to be very difficult and um if you know anything about the uk you know anything about you know colder climate countries bars and pubs are usually the place that everyone goes to sort of socialize when it's the colder months of the year in it so for them to take that away um from the citizens is a bit hard to take but again i think if we do want to get to a place where we eventually go back to normal we're going to have to sacrifice some things some some of our guilty pleasures and if we're being completely honest if we're you know if you're from the uk you would know we were never really in the proper lockdown anyway to begin with it was always kind of hands-off approach even when boris nearly died right the tories still kind of failed to ramp up the response they were still sort of quite lily livered and you know um waiting for somebody else to take responsibility on the issue and essentially they just allowed the public to kind of dictate how they approached it in a weird way right they encourage us to go out to eat and help out they encourage us to go and do our summer holidays in neighboring european union countries they um they they encourage us to go back to the bars right because the bars thing was the one that really struck a chord in me that was when i actually knew it was over when they reopened the bars but then they allowed you to sit indoors because i always had the impression that they were just going to reopen the bars and allow most places to have extended seating on the pavement oh sorry on the yeah on the pavement um 
and or or allow people to stand up on sort of like you know to have to be standing on these sort of like you know high tables that you sometimes have in bars but i didn't think they'd have tables and chairs back out again but they did i thought it would just be a place where you can go pick up drinks maybe stand around if there wasn't you know make sure there's maybe 16 people max in the pub that maybe fills 100 people that kind of spaced out i thought that was what they were going to do i didn't expect them to just reopen the pubs as per normal with just social distancing that was never going to be a sustainable long-term um alternative or you know solution to what's currently going on at the moment with the pandemic so that was the issue i think they didn't they weren't hard enough they weren't clear enough and then by the time they realized all the money that was essentially being bled out of the uk economy by the time they realized about how many businesses will go under which would negatively affect their bottom line they then decided to react and do something and by that time it was too late people already built up bad habits people already fed up too that's another thing too there is a bit of covid fatigue especially in the uk because it's just a lack of leadership because of lack of clear direction even just you know earlier on today um you had matt hancock you know waffling on on good morning britain you had the two scientists being pretty clear in their breakdown about things and supposedly you're gonna have boris trying to articulate this very um distressing bit of news to the public and make it seem somehow what inspiring make it seem somehow that there wasn't the end of the world he's going to have to try and convince or spin it in a way that's going to be um that's not going to be received the way he thinks it's going to be received right and he's never been really been good at that he's not the best you know he's not the best charmer in the world in that regard he he, he might be charismatic in his own little way but not in terms of dealing with conflicts not in that solution at all and um further details are here i guess the news on my end further leaked because i'm following this guy on twitter who's a good follower from the uk called jonathan downey um, um, he's part of the hospitality union and i think he's also part of i think it's eat what's that place in dawson uh oh yeah in uh street feast so if you've ever been there sort of like a multi-vendor marketplace where people have their own little you know street food um uh restaurants basically and they sell all different sort of stuff from all over the world but um uh, <laughs> He released some details regarding it. Um, this is his thread here on Twitter. His post said new curfew details um, are released. All bars and pubs, restaurants, and other hospitality in the UK will be required to close by 10 p.m. from this Thursday. Hospitality sector will be restricted by law to table service only, which is something we've already been doing. But this is really, 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 really um, distressing news. And again, another sign for me that. We're not going to be out of lockdown, especially in the UK. I'm saying, I, I said in the beginning anyway, from when we when um, we first went into lockdown and, you know, we first got reports of this crazy virus that was coming over from China and, you know, decimated parts of Italy and took out place part huge swaths of Spain. I was very adamant in the beginning that I didn't see this clearing up until the end of the year. I was guaranteed that was the case because I just assumed we would kind of be, you know, plodding along in terms of responses it'll take us a while to kind of get in a flow of actually doing a lockdown because even parts of italy and spain they were very no there were videos of people going crazy for the most part most of their citizens were very um uh agreeable in that sense right they were they were willing to um sacrifice their own personal liberties um in the hope of extending everyone else's life do you know what i mean and i think in the uk we never really had that kind of response no one really reacted to it in that way i don't know why it is it was it conspiracy theories was it um dodgy science no idea but i just don't see how this is going to change those people's minds because if anything the more time has gone on the more people that were sort of like you know pro lockdown have probably switched to the other side they're like you know what we should just open everything back up again so you're gonna have have a hard time convincing those people but this is basically the outline of what the plan is so it was embargoed from the 20 yeah well, it's continuous says the prime minister is to address the nation on latest coronavirus measures the prime minister is to set out a new measures to tackle the coronavirus as uk moves to alert level four we were never in free anyway that free alert level thing was a whole lot of crap right and if you're wondering what this alert level is essentially the uk decided to put together this weird nando's where's the where's the thing this nando's little graph right that essentially we could use as an idea of knowing how far along the covid recovery plan we were on but if you live in the uk you would know that we were never on free they tried to make it seem like we we're on free right which is gradual relaxation of restrictions and the virus and general circulation we were never there we were always on four sometimes even you know on five so i felt like they prematurely moved through the stages in an effort to kind of show safe face or to reassure the public or to save our summer or to get us to eat our help out whatever nonsense they pushed that forward so now them saying that we're going back to four is really um it's 
insulting to all of our intelligence in it because we know we weren't on four. We we didn't deserve to be on four whatsoever. That that's that's that goes without saying. Um he continues that all bars and pubs with hospitality will be required to close by 10 p.m. On Thursday, hospitality for food and drink will be restricted to law by table service only, which is a really strange thing to go into a UK pub and have people coming over to you on table and asking what drink and what you'd like to eat. It's a very, very strange experience, especially if you're used to going to a, a typical uh, British pub. It's like, you know, you go and order your stuff at the bar. You know what I mean? No one ever brings anything to you. Uh, they might come over to you and tell you to fuck off if you're being a bit too drunk, but they're never going to come and serve you at a table. So it's very odd to get used to that sort of stuff. So it continues, says the Prime Minister, well, today, uh, say, setting out next steps to tackle the spread of coronavirus as cases continue to rise in the UK and across Europe. He'll confirm pubs, bars, restaurants, and other hospitality in England will be required to close by 10 p.m. from this Thursday. The Prime Minister will also said hospitality sector will be restricted by law for table service only. Cabinet will meet this morning ahead of the Prime Minister setting up the changes in the statement to Parliament. He also is to bring together a COBR committee, Cabinet Ministers of First Minister, uh, Ministers and First Ministers to discuss the surge in cases. He'll make an address to the nation later in the day. On further days, he will continue. Uh, he will confront the virus in line um with the latest scientific evidence advice sorry and the whole the role everyone can continue to play in tackling the spread including by following the social distancing guidelines wearing face coverings and washing hands regularly again i think those three things people are pretty much okay with i just think it's the telling people not to go meet their friends because now we've got that rule of six right um telling people not to go to pubs after a certain time that's going to be the difficult one to kind of convince everybody to uh agree to it's just going to be very very hard i think so i think most people can even if they don't really agree what's that they think it's a pandemic they don't think it's real whatever it may be i think you can convince the wide majority of people to be like hey social distance stand on your little sticker when you're queuing up at tesco express um wear something across your face you know um wash your hands you know the, people can get down with that but when you start telling people that they can't go hug their grandma they can't go and see their parents they can't go meet other friends that live you know that live on their own that's when people are going to be like you know what get fucked do you know what I mean so that's going to be the difficult one um and number 10 spokesman said no one anticipates the challenges and the new measures will pose to many individuals and businesses anyway so that's that response so then obviously the restaurant industry uh one popular blog in the uk here called hot diners obviously um, and broke some of the news as well and got some um, reactions from people in the industry across Twitter who weren't and obviously pleased with the news. It says the following. So this guy called Steve Parley, I don't know what he does. He says, Stevie Parley, sorry, says the following. Making restaurants, bars and pubs close at 10 p.m. is just so stupid. No evidence will help, no reasoning, no impact, except to make everything even harder for an industry already on its knees. What a load of shit. What a bunch of idiots. How did we get here? interesting question because i've been wondering that too right if you're going to respond by telling you know bars and pubs not to open after a certain time because i don't know is that even because the law so far we don't know if it's a curfew that means that you can't go outside after 10 p.m it seems like it's a curfew in terms of going out to hospitality venues right if that's the case they'd have to kind of prove unequivocally that the hospitality industry is the reason why we're getting these numbers these spikes in cases and stuff they'd have to prove one way or the other that hey whenever we've seen vi data that in these towns or cities in the uk where there's a high concentration of bars and pubs the very next week or two weeks however much time they need to find out where or to kind of locate where the spikes are we get a spike in cases from people who said they were in that area that's the only way but if they can't prove that then you know i don't see what closing pub, what closing bars and pubs does then another side of it would be that from my limited knowledge i will assume that bars pubs and restaurants might be the best places to go during the night or in general indoors because they're having to do so much to just ensure that it's of a safe standard right in terms of having stuff wipe stuff down wearing face coverings most stuff mem members do in pubs and bars or at least a face shield um track and trace at the start before you go in some places have the um, temperature gun right they're doing a lot of things to ensure that they're providing the best possible space the safest space for their punters so if anything you would imagine they would be best they would be in the best place to make the necessary adjustments in order to um 
work within you know the current pandemic limits like you'd imagine so so that's the thing that's bizarre but anyway who what do i know another lady called lisa markle said restaurants and pubs are closed at 10 p.m just a quick reminder according to the php or phe which is what uh i guess this is week 37 of the covid outbreaks by an institution in england supposedly 46 percent of the cases come from um care homes 21 from education 18 from workplaces eight from other which is funny because matt hancock in the interview with good morning britain was badgering on about people going back to work and kids being in school which is, you know, gives rise to the allegation that the government's more concerned about keeping Pret Manger open and making sure your kids are in school than they care about the actual economy, right? They don't care about that. And I guess the schools maybe benefit the government in one way, shape, or form in terms of kickbacks. We don't know. Allegedly, let's say that. And then, of course, work, you know, the deal is with that one, right? There's some really um, nefarious ties involved there. So it's interesting that none of the evidence points to the hospitality industry being um as responsible as other, other places right for instance in this graph it shows that hospitality or food outlets and restaurants are responsible for maybe five percent of the outbreaks five percent and you deciding to close them you know at 10 p.m it doesn't really make any sense does it and again i don't mind it i think this this probably should have been a rule at the beginning when we started lockdown we probably should have had it really tight and then loosened or kind of eased the, re the restrictions as time went on right the same thing they did in new york right um that was probably a good example they've only started to recently starting to you know relax some of the regulations and allow people to kind of you know meet in bigger groups and all that sort of stuff but in general it was a slow steady process but for some reason in the uk we didn't do it even though our prime minister nearly died from this bloody virus it still didn't wake them up it continues here another guy called ed cumming said was boris johnson bitten by a restaurant as a boy that's pretty funny um a guy called alan k said coronavirus is, is around during the day as well this not fucking dracula which is interesting right that they decide to do that yeah the timing thing is interesting like if 10 p.m is like the peak time but i guess in the government's um defense maybe they're thinking more along the lines of like if we close at 10 that means it's going to give people less time to mingle right is that true could it be no that's not true right that doesn't matter if I'm if I'm at the pub with my friends and we're getting on it, I'm not gonna go home at 10 p.m. I'm still gonna be outside, no matter how cold it is. And and I'm sure some places, some of the more, um, let's say risky risky establishments won't mind, you know, uh, won't mind sort of doing lock-ins and especially if they got partners that have been supporting them from the very beginning of lockdown and they they want to kind of give back or they just know that they can trust them they're definitely going to do some you know not so legal things to get around it because that's a lot of money on the table they're missing out on right unless people are drinking really early in the day i don't know but i'd assume most people are still going to the pubs or the bars at 5 p.m so that's not a lot of time to get people to go in and drink right so um yeah that's going to be very concerning going forward and then another one here last one is from hugh smith son right he said did it ever go away to somebody in response to someone saying time for a long boozy lunch to return so i guess in one way the good thing they've done is that because it's going to be starting on thursday there's not going to be any chance of anybody because i thought my initial reaction is another article here from bbc my initial reaction was if they decide to because obviously they announced they're going to announce on tuesday right so I mean, my thing was, if they were going to say, hey, it's going to come into place on Monday, it would have created an entire surge of people going out on the weekend to get their last night of freedom in on it. So at this rate, because it's going to start on Thursday, it gives the pubs time to kind of, you know, get some of those rules in place. And then by the weekend, well, by the time the weekend comes along, everyone should be already aware of what they sh are allowed to do and not allowed to do by that time. So I guess that's probably the best thing they've done in that regard. And the last article here from BBC says COVID pubs restaurant to close at 10 p.m. It says this sector will also be restricted by law to table service only. The measures are set to be announced by the Prime Minister in Parliament here. And in other news speaking, da, da, da. what difference will it make? It says here um, by analyst Nick Trigo. It says people are understandably asking what difference closing at 10 p.m. makes coupled with the table service. But what ministers hope is that the move, along with the rule of six at the time that came into force last week, will act as a warning to the public efforts to curb the virus and need to be rebounded. Um, we double sorry. Oh, that's true. And I guess I'll just it will put the seat, it'll sow the seed in people's heads, right? That we're still 
not out of it. I guess that's the main important thing here. It says what remains to be seen is whether any of the restrictions will accompany this move. He says behind the scenes, both ministers and their advisors have argued over what is the right thing to do and how much the public will be willing to tolerate. Um, it seems inevitable that it, do you find it funny as well? We haven't heard anything from Dominic Cummings, and he's been pretty quiet, hasn't he? That guy. Interesting. It seems inevitable that the virus will continue to spread. What's um, that's what uh, uh, respiratory viruses do during winter, um, especially one, especially one for which there is limited immunity and no vaccine. But how quickly and wildly something uh, no one knows. The risk of trying to suppress the virus and the government will soon find itself having to make another decision about further steps. Which is the more interesting part of it is if this doesn't work, then we just have to get them to the realization that the only way we're going to combat, especially in the UK, other places are okay because I think people are a little bit more um, civic minded. But here, I think we'd have to come to a realization that we're probably going to have to resort to herd immunity. We're probably going to have to resort to herd immunity, um, you know, copy the Swedish model. I'm not too sure how that, how well that's going to work because, you know, for the, from what I've seen in Sweden, they still you know, they still had a high number of deaths as well per, per capita. Um, and they are people who I would say would listen to their government if they told them, hey, don't go to this area, stay two meters apart. They sort of would abide by the rules to some degree. I just don't think we're going to abide by them. So the only real solution for the UK is herd immunity in some sort of clumsy way. We just figure it out. Or there's a vaccine that we develop and test pretty soon. But considering everything I've read in between the lines between that guy that from WME who said essentially Coachella won't happen until 2022 summer. He didn't say 2021, he said 2022. And I take into consideration how quickly this new Premier League season started. The fact that they decided to just give the what players six week break and then start straight away. They didn't wait until October because if they would have waited until October, they probably wouldn't have been able to restart the league, especially with these new um, restrictions coming into place in it. So things might have got worse by that time. So for them to decide to do it so quickly, the Coachella thing, all the people that have money on the line, everyone that has skin in the game, I'm looking at their decisions and that's sort of informing my view on how the economy will reopen. And I just think, or just how would stuff get back to normal? I just think there's too much money involved in those sectors, you know, football, live music. Um, if they're saying next year, or if they're saying to 2022 and the football season is jam-packed this, this year, I would assume that we're probably looking at late 2021. That's my prediction. Maybe let's say August as well. As in stuff gets back to normal, as in we're like packed in restaurants, we're going back to department stores, we're in clubs. I think I'm saying for the UK anyway, I'm saying the summer of 2021, 100%, or the end of summer, that'll be August. That's my opinion. Um, let me know what your guesses are. And it continues here, it says, how far ministers are prepared to go? Every restriction that is taken has a negative consequence to society, but the nature of the virus means lives will undoubtedly be lost, and the more it spreads, balancing two harms will definitely define the next six months or the next six or 12 months actually so yeah let's see what happens man um again it's terrible terrible for everybody involved in the uk i think um if you live in the uk it's really bad news if you have a business within the hospitality sector it's even worse news for you and um, it just goes to prove it our government is completely inept completely incredibly incompetent um clueless short-sighted um lacking in clarity um sometimes purposely vague right it's just an annoying clusterfuck of a situation where you're just thinking to yourself hey man if you just would have taken it seriously in the beginning even if it meant losing some friends even if it meant pissing people off just if you would have just taken it seriously we could have even still had the summer right they forced they didn't force us but they they kind of gently encourage us to go and visit some of our you know allies in the european union and go to bolster their economy places like greece what plus in italy spain they were really encouraging people to go there right um to boost tourism and yeah if they would have just taken it seriously in the beginning we probably still could have done that but under much better circumstances now i think there's no coincidence that these numbers are spiking just when summer ends when of course flu season starts and when everyone's back from their holidays right it's no coincidence that these numbers are spiked so much so it's just a bit like god man you guys did such a terrible job and that's the funny thing about, it's all about politics like again i've never really paid attention to it but prior prior to lockdown but now you know there's not really much to really be keep attention well to keep my attention so looking at it, it's just interesting to see like just how um 
just how kind of freestyle it kind of feels, isn't it? It's just like they just it's like they're kind of making up as they go along, some of these politicians. And then the other aspect of it is the fact that they're never really held accountable until their party sort of like, you know, um elected out of office, um, of our parliament. They're never they're never actually not punished, but you never get pulled up for what you did wrong during your term. It's just a thing that you just did at the time. But it's not like someone could categorically say you were wrong. And you have to kind of fess up to it and say, yeah, I was wrong. I did this. I came up short here. Here's where these lessons I've learned. Hopefully the person that come in behind me, you know, um, can learn from that, and not repeat them. Right. It doesn't happen that way. It just, you get, you know, you get bounced out of parliament and, you know, that's it. You just keep on moving on and doing your thing, doing private speaking engagements and a couple of zoom calls at TV stations, but that's it. You don't get reprimanded whatsoever. So I don't see how that's a very good, um, platform or you know ecosystem to encourage critical thinking or to encourage some level of practicality in these situations or foresight it's just not going to encourage that because you're rewarding the wrong things you're rewarding people for being not conniving but for knowing how to play the game and i don't know man especially in this sort of moment the last thing we need is career is is career politicians playing the game we need people who can actually care about their citizens who care about their constituents, who care about their local community to kind of step up and say, hey, here's what needs to be done. A, B, C, and D. We need to sacrifice this, that, and that. Do you know what I mean? We're in this together, blah, blah, blah. But instead, no, we get this flipping silly, you know, bootleg flipping Nando's restaurant list of options. Isn't it? Absolute shambles. But hey, let me know, man. If you're in the UK and you're, um, <laughs> and you're waking up to that news, let me know what your first impressions are. What do we do next?